In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a quantile quantile plot, otherwise known as a QQ plot in Microsoft Excel, just like this one here. As always, please let me know if this content is useful by leaving a like on this video. And without further ado, let's jump into Excel and get started. So in my Excel sheet, I have some example data. Specifically, there are 49 data points. And what I want to do is to create a QQ plot. Now QQ plots are great visual aids to inspect if your data fits a normal distribution. The first step to create a QQ plot in Excel is to rank your data from smallest to largest. This is really easy to do with the rank average function. To do this, next to my first data point, I will enter the following, equals rank.avg, open bracket. Then I'll select the cell containing my first data point. I'll then add a comma, and next I need to tell Excel what cells contain my complete data, since it needs to know this in order to calculate what rank my first data point is. To do this, I will click and drag on all of my data. I'll then add another comma. Then I'll add the number 1 because I want Excel to rank in ascending order. Finally, I will close the bracket. Before I press enter, I will highlight the range of cells that contain the data in my formula, which is the middle part. Then on my keyboard, I will press the F4 button. As you can see, this has inserted a dollar symbol before the column letters and row numbers in my highlighted cells. This means that if I copy this formula to other cells, this range of cells will stay the same. Finally, I'll press the enter button to run the formula. I get a rank of one for my first data point. This means this particular data point is the smallest value in my data set. Now what I need to do is to repeat this ranking process for all of my data points. Fortunately, we can use Excel's autocomplete feature to do this. So I'll select the cell I just calculated. Then do you see the little green square that's in the bottom right of the cell? Well, if you click and drag on this until you reach the bottom of your data set, all the ranks of the data will now be filled. For the next step, we need to calculate the percentile value of the ranks. So in the first cell, I will enter equals open bracket. Then I'll select the cell that contains the rank for my first data point. I'll then subtract 0 0.5 and close the bracket. We then need to divide this answer by the number of data points in your data. For me, this is 49, but you can also use the count function to enter this for you. To do this, I will enter count open bracket. Then I'll highlight all of my data, and then I'll close the bracket. As before, I'll also highlight these range of cells and press F4 on my keyboard to add the dollar signs, since I want these cells to remain constant when I copy the formula down. Finally, I'll press the enter key. I again need to repeat this process for all of my data points. So I'll click on the first cell and again drag the little green square down to the bottom. The next step is to calculate the Z scores based on the percentile values we just calculated. To do this for the first data point, I'll enter equals norm.s.imv, open bracket. Then I'll select the percentile for the first data point I just calculated and then I'll close the bracket and press enter. Again, I'll drag this formula down so the process is repeated for all of the data points. The Z scores in this instance are normalized values based on a normal distribution, where the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. So for example, if the percentile value was 0.5, then the Z score will be zero. The final thing we need to calculate to be able to create the QQ plot is the Z scores based on our original data. To do this, I will use the standardize function. So in a new cell, I'll enter equals standardize open bracket. Then I'll select the cell containing my first data point and I'll add a comma. Then I need to add the average value for my data. So I'll use the average function here. Within the brackets, I'll select the cells containing my data. I'll then add another comma. And this time I need to add the standard deviation of the data so I can use the STDEV function. Again, within the brackets, I'll highlight my data. Before I finish, I will highlight the cells in the average and standard deviation functions and press F4 on my keyboard to lock them in this formula. 
Finally, I'll press the enter key on my keyboard to calculate the Z score for the first data point. Then it's a case of copying this formula down until all Z scores have been calculated. Now we have the theoretical Z scores from the normal distribution and the actual data Z scores. So we have everything we need to create the QQ plot. The last step, obviously, is to create the plot itself. To do this, I will highlight the last two columns which contain the Z-score values, and then I'll go to Insert, Insert Scatter, and then I'll select Scatter. And as you can see, a new scatter plot has been created. The first thing I'm going to do is to move my Y-axis to the left, since it's currently in the middle of the graph. To do this, I will right-click on the graph, and then select Format Chart Area. A new sidebar should now open to the right. In the sidebar, I will change the drop down menu to be horizontal axis. Then I'll select the axis options symbol to the right. And I'll select the axis options header. And where it says vertical axis crosses, I will change this to an axis value. I'll then change this value to be negative three. Now you can see that the Y axis has been moved to the left. I'll then repeat this process for the x-axis. So this time I'll switch to edit the vertical axis. And again, I will change the axis value to negative three. Now I have the axes adjusted, I'll add some axes titles so my readers know what it is I've plotted on the graph. To do this with the graph selected, I will go to chart design, add chart element, axis titles. Then I'll select the horizontal and the vertical options. The y-axis in this case will be the data quantiles, and obviously this is a z-score. The x-axis is the normal theoretical quantiles, and again this is a z-score. I'll also change the graph title to read QQ plot. A useful feature to add to a QQ plot is a linear trend line. To add this with the graph selected, go to chart design, add chart element, trend line, and then select linear. I'll also change the colour of the line to black by clicking on it and then going to Format, Shape Outline, and then selecting the black colour. While I'm here, I'll also change the style of the line to be solid rather than dotted. So that's the QQ plot. To interpret the plot itself, you want to look at the data points on the graph and how well they fit on this linear line. If my data had a completely normal Gaussian distribution, then all data points will fit perfectly on this linear line. Looking at my example, I can see that the majority of my data points are either on or are very close to this linear line, with the exception of this area here. So overall, I'm fairly confident that I have an approximately normal or Gaussian distribution. It's also worth plotting a frequency histogram to explore normality further. And if you want to learn how to do this in Excel, then check out this tutorial here. And that wraps up this tutorial. You now know how to create and interpret a QQ plot in Microsoft Excel. If you found this video useful, please leave a like. It really does help support the channel. If you've got a question, pop it down in the comments below. Also, consider subscribing for more weekly tutorials.